Hi all. I've got this uh, Dremel engraver I want to do an open box on. So it says includes letter, number, template, and one carbide point. Uh, model 290-01 complete operating instructions enclosed there's the uh, carbide point I picked it up at the hardware store a few months ago it was on sale tried to find an American made one but uh, this one went on sale, so I went ahead and grabbed it. Replaceable carbide for use on a variety of other materials. Reciprocating action for optimal control. Variable stroke depth for various engraving effects. So that's the so that's the depth. Separate on off switch to keep depth setting. So let's see here. Personalize your project. Protect valuables, letter, number, templates. Included for professional looking results. Here's the 800 number 800 437 3635. 800 437 3635. Dremel.com D R E M E L dot com. Okay, let's open it up here. What I bought it for is I want to engrave the serial number on my plow. So that's some heavy duty metal. So I'm hoping it's strong enough to cut into that. Okay, so here's the tool pretty good feel to it. It's not light. It feels heavy duty. It doesn't really feel like a pen if you're going to write with it. So here's off and on. I guess there's a hole to hang it up on your tool bench. Here's the depth. One, two, three, four, five. Let's see here. You've got to have a little screwdriver here to uh, put that carbide tip in. I lost it already. Okay, here's the uh, template. That'll come in handy. My handwriting is not all that great. Pretty heavy duty. It's heavy duty plastic. It's pretty thick. registration it's always nice to register because uh, if there's a recall then they'll get in touch with you here's some directions oh geez that's a really little pamphlet 
I guess there's not much to engraving, right? Turn on and, and write. When using electric appliances, basic precautions should always be followed, including the following. Read all the instructions before using the appliance. To reduce the risk of injury, close supervision is necessary when the appliance is used by children. Uh, do not contact moving parts. Don't engrave your finger. Only use attachments recommended or sold by the manufacturer. Do not use outdoors. Well, I don't know. Can't bring the plow in, so just don't stick the cord in water, right? Uh, do not unplug by pulling on the cord. To unplug, grasp the plug. So that's this guy here. The cord's really sturdy, though. You know, I think you could yank on that; and it wouldn't hurt it. Unplug from outlet when not in use and before cleaning. The appliance is provided with a double insulation and has no serviceable parts. See additional information for double insulated appliances in the installation instructions. To reduce risk of electrical shock, do not put engraver in water or other liquid. Do not place or store appliance where it can fall or be pulled into the tub or sink. This appliance is provided with double insulation Use only identical replacement parts. See instructions for servicing of double insulated appliances. For proper appliance installation, refer to the installation instruction sections. Okay, so that's the stuff down here. Doesn't really say how to engrave anything. Right? Here's some stuff here. Okay, to reduce to reduce the risk of electric shock, this appliance has a polarized plug. It's polarized because uh, you can tell one's bigger than the other. So that's pretty common these days. This plug will fit in a polarized outlet only one way. If the plug does not fit fully in the outlet, reverse the plug. If it still does not fit, contact a qualified electrician to install the proper outlet. Do not change the plug in any way. So what they're saying there is don't, don't sand these off. You know. Just buy a, buy a surge protector. You know. Servicing of double insulated appliances. Uh, some dust created by power sanding, sawing, grinding, drilling, other construction activities contains chemicals known to cause cancer, birth defects, or other reproductive harm. Some examples of these lead from lead based paints crystalline silica from bricks and cement and other masonry products, arsenic and chrome from chemically treated lumber. Risk from these exposure varies depending on how often you do this type of work. 
to reduce your exposure to these chemicals, work in a well-ventilated area and work with approved safety equipment, such as dust masks that are designed to filter out microscopic particles, and safety glasses. Wear safety glasses on everything you do, even cutting the grass. Operating instructions. No matter how you use your Dremel electric engraver, You'll do a professional-like job by following the simple operating instructions shown. In order to use your engraver, you must first install the engraver point. To properly install the engraver point, loosen the set screw located in the engraver point holder. Place the engraver point inside the point holder and firmly tighten the set screw. It is important to make sure this engraver point is held firmly in place by the set screw. To remove a worn out engraver point, loosen the set screw and remove the engraver point. <clears throat> Replacement of engraver points may be purchased from your Dremel dealer or direct from the factory. <clears throat> Before plugging in the tool, be certain that the outlet voltage you are using matches the voltage number marked on the back of the label. Well, here, they're talking about here, this is the 120. See, we're, we're in America. So 120. You know, if you were in Europe, that would be different. To, to use the in, engraver, Turn the engraver on by moving the on-off switch located at the end of the tool. This is the on-off switch. So it's, it's just a 1 and a 0. So, so 0 must mean off. 1 must mean on. Hold the engraver at the sight angle as you would normally hold a pencil. Hold the unit lightly while resting your arm comfortably on a table. Do not press down hard while engraving. Use a light touch guiding the point over the work somewhat slower than you would normally write. Okay, so that's an important tip. Do not press down hard while engraving. Use light touch, guiding the point over the work somewhat slower than you would normally write. Adjust the knob on the side of the engraver housing controls that stroke length and therefore the depth of the engraver. It is not intended to be used as an off switch. A good rule of thumb is to select the lowest setting which will produce a deep enough engraving mark to meet your requirements. To familiarize yourself, experiment with different settings on scrap material. Note, the lowest position of the adjusting knob will with the knob pointing to the number one. So this is the number one here. One, two, three, four, five. So let's see here. The lowest position of the adjusting knob will be with the knob pointing to the number one. Okay, so number one is the lowest depth. With intended use, the position indent indicator associated with the depth control knob will begin to wear down and less noticeable. With extended use, the positive indent indicator associated with the depth control knob will begin to wear down. 
and be less noticeable. This is to be expected and does not indicate malfunction of the engraver. So I guess what they're saying is these numbers are going to wear down. With extended use, the position, the positive detent indicator associated with the depth control knob will begin to wear down and be less noticeable. This is to be expected. So it's either this little thing or this here. Something's going to wear down. The engraver point furnished with your engraver is carbide steel. Under most conditions it will perform very satisfactory on glass, steel, ceramics, and other hard metals. However, for industrial or commercial work where continuous operation is required, a diamond point is recommended. Do not engrave on electronic media such as CDs, DVDs, etc. Engraving on these materials may damage the media. And then there's a warranty address. Okay. The point is still in the package. Okay, so once you loosen that screw up a little bit, it moves real easy. I don't know if you can see it there, but there's a you can see the screw going up and down there. Okay, so just loosen that up. Take this and drop it down inside here. I'm just making sure it goes down deep enough. And then tighten this up. And, and then tighten this up. off I, I think I think the zero means off and then we'll plug this in okay and then we'll turn this on my bit fell out already Okay, so I'll, I'll unplug it. I have no idea where the bit went. Probably shot forward, right? Let's, let's, let's 
try it again here. This goes down inside here. This goes down inside here. Let's see here. So, okay, so that really goes down inside deep. See there. Okay, that should do it. So first time you start it up, keep it pointed away from it. So start it up and we'll see what happens. Okay. Let's try it on here. I don't know if you can see those in there, but I made a zero and some ones. Okay, here's, here's a piece of plexiglass. It's just a scrap piece. I thought we'd fool around with it. Here's the... Uh, Okay, that's uh, that's got a pretty good cut. It's not it's not deep, but you can see it. Let's, let's put this up on a deeper depth here. We'll go. Let's put this up on a deeper depth. So we'll go about halfway. It doesn't say anything about, uh, do I have to turn it off before I change this? Let's see. The adjusting knob on the side of the engraver housing controls the stroke length and therefore the depth of engraving. It is not intended to be used as an off switch. A good rule of thumb is to select the lowest setting which will produce a deep enough engraving mark. Hmm. Okay. And then we'll go full depth. See, see how deep it goes? Okay, so I'd say they're kind of the same type truth. You know, I went over each one, what, two, three times, but uh, this one, you can definitely tell that one's deeper. 
So I'd say this one would probably be fine for like your laptop and things like that around the house. This one might be good for like like a minimum security type engraving but for things that you really want engraved I'd always go with the deepest depth even though I went over it three times it's not real deep you know. So when I stuck, when I kept sticking it into the end there, I, I could feel it go go down inside. Okay, I've got a little piece of tin here. Okay, so that's a that's a nice little cut. I went over it three times. I think that would be good. See, I'm thinking like if they take some, if they take a file and try to sand that down, how far would how how deep would they need to go before they got the serial number off? So, you can see I went over that numerous times, and uh, it wasn't, it, it really didn't cut. It seems to be about the same depth as this one, maybe a little, a little more, but not much. Not really cutting into the metal at all, to tell you the truth. So even doing it there, I don't think it really made much of a difference as far as depth. And I was pressing down pretty good too, so. So what I'm saying there, there's, you don't have to worry about cutting through the metal. It's engraving, but it's not really going deep. Okay, so next time we'll go out and we'll put the serial number on the plow. See ya.